Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I immigrated here from, from Israel, so it's like a very different place. The Bay Area is a bit like some kind of futuristic utopia. It's inspiring, can sometimes be tiring. Yeah, it's a very open place. I learned a lot. I grew a lot as a person just from being here and all the interactions I've had. How do you explain? Like, what is, what is Cardano? It's a cult. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, finally someone said it, guys. <laughs> I haven't seen my parents in years. <laughs> Cardano is a, is a network, it's a blockchain, it's also a community, it's also a set of ideas about, you know, what's the next step for the human race, kind of, but in a pretty, through a kind of a scientific lens, I would say, mostly. I try to make it really simple to a person. If you ask me what I'm doing, I'm saying, like, I work for this organization that controls a billion dollar fund that uh, wants to figure out how to use these funds well and how to spend them effectively, given that it has thousands or tens of thousands of people who are making decisions uh, to govern it. And that's the most simplistic way I can, I can, I can present it. I mean, basically Catalyst is the, the realization of all my fantasies. <laughs> like in a weird way, like professionally, this has been a, don't tell anybody, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very, very happy and motivated about what I do because it's been 10 years I've been working on collaboration tools and really, really trying to think about how people can collaborate well at scale. And this is the very first time that I get to do that, not in a theoretical way, not in a kind of wishy-washy way, but for real, with real resources, real consequences and gigantic, amazing, reactive community that is aligned and works together. I never thought it, this day would come, but that, that I would be in this position, but uh, here it is. So I, I take the beautiful moments in. I think a nice aspect of Catalyst, if you really think about it, is it's almost like a machine that converts these like raw tokens in a, that sit in a treasury into resource in the hands of the people who are building the network. Okay, and, and, that's, what, and that's what it does. It just transfers the wealth to, to the doers and to the reviewers and the maintainers of the system. It's a creativity machine and it forms a collective incentive for everybody to channel their energies towards basically solving hard problems. The Catalyst community is a complex, interconnected network. Proposers, implementers, community advisors, communicators, lurkers, community champions, all these different people interact in each other in, and influence each other in deep and profound ways. We're all pulling ourselves up and evolving together. Much like uh, the dynamics of, of tree growth. In order to grow, be tall and resilient, it's actually essential that it grows at a slow and steady pace. They take uh, hundreds of years to grow to their full size, but by that time, the fundamentals, the base is, is sound, and they can reach the top of the forest. This is very similar to what we're doing in Catalyst with our experimentation and also the careful building of the community and the systems and the tools. We're making sure that we're going to be the tallest, most sustainable tree in the forest. I remember meeting this like uh, chief innovation officer of a Fortune 500 company, and I was presenting him the tool to uncover like problems in the organization. That gave gave every employee like the opportunity to express like what they think is, what problems do I identify, and what kind of help do I need to perform well. And he was like, "No, we can't do that. It will cause too much trouble for management if everybody is aware of all the problems we have and all the needs in the different departments of the organization. It's like too much to deal with for us." 
one of the things I never got to do in Catalyst is, and, and I actually did do my research, was deal with a lot of the psychological blocks people have about collaboration. And one, one of the major ones, the ability to express needs. You work in a traditional company, uh, you are uh, trained, I don't know how to call it, like, I mean, all a, a lifelong, you know, like you're trained to obey, you're, you're trained to satisfy your boss. Uh, you're not supposed to say it's, this is hard, this is difficult, this is uncomfortable, or I disagree with it. This is in a school environment. Can you do any one of these things? No, right? And this is our collective childhood at the family level, at, 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 in, in your teacher level, in the kindergarten level. It's hard to say, but it's through oppression, right? We've been oppressed very, very harshly since we were born. And everybody went through it, so everybody takes it as uh, this is how it should be, or this is just the way things are. And uh, what I realized in, in my research, even before the, my IOHK days, is that people don't even have the basic tooling to be able to express their needs. And I think over time we're going to get there in, in Catalyst, because it's not just a technological transformation, it's a consciousness transformation. That's like the big competitive advantage, okay, of, system of like Catalyst over other collaboration technologies is that we don't ignore the full human behind, behind the technology. We're not just thinking abstractly about incentives and system design and interfaces, but we realize that actually at the center of it is, is, is a human being behind this that, that needs to operate, that wants to thrive. And then you need to reawaken within you a part of you that is free, that is autonomous, that is self-determining, and it can't happen via a neat interface or by incentivize. It has to happen through a meaningful, deep meaningful experience, a series of deep meaningful experiences between you and others that creates trust, that creates a sense of bond, that creates a sense of meaning. And then, yeah, and then little by little it happens. You know, the, the transformation comes from from inside. I guess what does Catalyst look like and also what does Cardano look like when we get to a billion users? We don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll never know. Like, I mean, it, it's, the thing is that there's like, you know, in, in, in paradigm shifts and I, and I show like, I have, you know, I have like this little graph I show of, of Catalyst. Like there's a point when there's a phase shift, when, when water becomes gas, you know, water becomes hot and hot and hot more hot and more hot, suddenly it becomes something completely different. It, nobody knows the future, but my prediction is that by 2025, there will be a, a collective realization. Not, not in Cardano community, but around the world. There's actually a, an alternative to the existing governance systems. Not because it's a, more moral or, or, or like the right thing to do, but because it's inevitable, because it produces better outcomes, it's more engaging, and actually that there was underneath it all a huge hunger, a thirst for, for an alternative. Those economical patterns, okay, of, of collaboration and human capacity for collaboration it's a foundation, it's a base layer of everything. Everything comes based on top of that. That means that even a minor tweak on those fundamental primitives can cause huge change. There's gonna be another, another Cambrian explosion. But I think out of it would, would come something that is, something that we never dreamed is possible.